to the Anarchy Garage and today we're going to be doing something completely different by showing you all the way around all of the different vehicles in our multiple sites of the Anarchy Garage. So there may even be a few surprises and vehicles that you haven't seen before and if there's something on our channel that you want to see more of drop it in the comments below and we will try and get an episode out as quickly as we can. So let's get started on one of the smallest vehicles in the Anarchy Garage. Okay, so first in the Anarchy Garage, we have the Chopster. Now, this came on the channel very early. It's only had one episode. It is basically half BMX on the front and then half mobility scooter on the back. This is actually one of the more used vehicles in the garage as well. We do kind of all jump on and off it. We go down to the shops on it. My kids use it a lot for kind of racing around the garden and also at shows and stuff. It's great because the, my kids can have a cruise around, but when it's got the trailer on, we can put all of our stuff on there and just kind of cruise around at a steady speed. So yeah, the Chopster, I think has reached its full potential with us. I don't really see us doing much more to it, but to be fair, it is super cool and we all absolutely love it. Here is Anarchy Kart number one, and this is Europe's first road legal converted go-kart. Now we've done a full how to build series on our channel, so you at home can make one of these as well. This particular one has a GSXR 600 engine on the back. It has lights, it has mirrors, it has road legal tires and everything else that you would need to put a go-kart on the road. This go-kart though is just kind of getting through that build stage where all of the little problems are kind of getting worked through. And I'm getting more and more used to putting miles on it. So this thing has actually just come back from the Isle of Wight where we were on show there and we managed a full lap of the island on it as well. So we're really impressed with it. It's now starting to look the entire package and it is one of those vehicles that every time you go on it, it shocks you, scares you and it's just so exhilarating to be on. So yeah, that is Anarchy Kart number one. So here is then the car that probably needs the least introduction on the channel, and that is Anarchy Stang. It is my 1969 Mustang Mach 1 Fastback. It's the world's first AMG converted Mustang. So it has an E63 AMG bi-turbo engine in it and kicks out an amazing 721 horsepower and 1200 newton meters of torque. All of that is put to the road through a Quaif LSD in the back and some big wide sticky tires as well. This car was one of those that I wanted to build it to drive it and I have done that. This car has been all over Europe. I've done over 10,000 miles in it now and it has been a spectacular car on the road. With all the gauges and all the dash and stuff out of the E63 as well, it is a super comfortable place to be and with all the modern amenities that you would need for a road trip such as sat nav, air conditioning and climate. So yeah, great car and that is Anarchy Stank. <laughs> Welcome then to the back of Smog and this is actually the newest vehicle into the Anarchy Garage. It is a Mercedes U100L Turbo and what makes it special is this is a 2.9 Sprinter engine and gearbox in it. That means that it hasn't got all of the levers that some of the big ones have got and they do regard it as a baby mod because it hasn't got all of the overdrive and the extra different gears on it as well. But what that means for us is this will cruise at between 55 and 60 mile an hour on the motorway and delivers an amazing 28 miles to the gallon out of a truck this size is quite spectacular. The reason this has come into the garage though is this is our new merch truck and we are just getting started with it, turning it into that dream vehicle to make it much easier for us to go to shows. So in the back here is lovely, clean and dry. 
We've got lights in here, it's got heating and it's got seats, but we're yet to get stuck in and turn it into this super plush overnight day van, which is what we want. Also with the cab, it's super clean on the inside, but again, we're gonna put our own stamp on it as well. So yeah, there'll be much more to come from our Unismog. then when we get into the Anarchy Garage and this is my C43 AMG that we'll call Girth. Now this car I bought when I was 20 years old. This was one of those real Q cars at the time. It has one of the most powerful normally aspirated V8 engines of its era which is a 4.3 AMG engine. These as well they only made just over 300 of them for the UK market so they're one of those cars that Unless you really know what it is, you just won't know. It was obviously nicknamed by everybody as a wolf in sheep's clothing because it does look so close to the standard model, apart from the big bumpers, wheels and exhaust, and then obviously everything that's inside it. So it is a proper Q car. This particular model was one of the lowest spec examples in the UK, and that was exactly what I wanted at the time. Because just for instance, if one of the headlights went down on this when it was pretty much new when I owned it, it was a thousand pounds to replace a headlight bulb. So for me, that just scared the hell out of me. So I actually sought after one of the most basic models I could, but it's actually proven the test of time because everything works on this and there's nothing really scary on this as far as bills go anymore. Um, it's got massive brakes on the front as standard, which one of the big calling cards for this was it would outbreak a Porsche 911 Turbo, which for a big saloon car like this of its era, that was quite a feat as well. Um, this particular one as well has a full Designio interior, so it's what they call piano interior, and obviously the massive engine under the hood, Bilstein suspension, and I absolutely love this car. It's great because a lot of things I dislike about a modern car are all the bings and bongs and everything beeping at you and kind of telling you what to do. This to me is one of that last of the era where you can just get on and drive it. It doesn't have lights flashing up at you and it doesn't kind of drive you nuts over complicating the driving experience. It just cracks on, starts up and gets on with the job. So yeah, this is Girth and let us know if you want to see this in a future episode. me round then to the e-type revenge now this is one of those cars that we are on with at the moment so this is a e-type series 3 it is a 2 plus 2 and this is having a 22 plate f-type engine and running gear put into it so if you look back on previous episodes you'll see we actually cut up an 18 month old f-type with a 5 litre supercharged engine in and everything out of that is actually going into this car. So fabrication has started on this and it's going really well. It's had new sills in and outer, we've reinforced them. It's had new floors, it's had reinforced chassis rails. So progress on this car is actually really, really cooking ahead. I've also been building a space frame to go on the front of this. So the engine is actually nearly mounted onto this body as well, making it Again, a first in the world for this to be done. So yeah, this is the E-Type Revenge and there's loads more videos and content on this as well. So what we're gonna be doing now is I'm gonna pop over to the other garage and go and meet Chef and Rich over there. I'm gonna show you around there as well. So welcome to workshop number two of the Anarchy Garage. So we've got a few more bits dotted around all over the place in here. So we're gonna each go through and just give you a quick rundown on stuff that you know about and love, you might have forgotten about, and also stuff that you might not actually know about. So I'm gonna leave it on to Richard to explain this mess. This monstrosity. Yeah. So this is Trixer, and as you well know, at the end of the um, launch episode we had, I sent the chain through the back of the engine, which was very painful at the time. It's taken me a bit of time to build myself up to ripping it all to bits, but I've got a new lower engine casing, 
and we are going to pull it out, swap them over, put it back in. I'm going to spend a bit of time lining the chain up this time. And um, yeah, fingers crossed she'll be there at the Isle of Wight running and riding. you actually going to see this thing it's had loads of work done to it but we haven't shown you yet it will be coming <laughs> so don't worry so this in true redneck rich form is everything he's ever dreamed of and this is topper the lawnmower yeah. but she's not going to be staying a lawnmower for very long well no technically she'll always be a lawnmower she, she'll always be a lawnmower yeah, yeah. but um, there's lots more happening to yeah and we've had another year we've already had a bit of a play with it we um we took the gearing apart on the back end to make it go a bit quicker so this one actually went from six or seven miles an hour to i think it's floating speeds about 20 now which is quite scary on this to be fair so it hooks up quick as well quick yeah. enough that it does very mildly in the correct conditions especially with a fat redneck on the back does wheelies yeah which you will see later on yeah so um, <laughs> yeah. this episode top for everyone <laughs> Soapbox Racer. We bought this from Chase Car Centre. Thank you very much. Um, we are doing Mark McCann's Soapbox Race on it, but we are going to take this, modify it a little bit, make it our own, make it a bit more comfortable as well because I don't really fit in the seat. Put a body on top and then we're going to go and uh, see what she'll do. Yeah, so fingers crossed. This thing is actually quite quick. We've already had a couple of little goes with it and even with Rich's weight on there, it moves so well. So we can't wait to start tearing into this thing and making it full. Anarchy Garage style, ready to take the rest of you guys that are going to be at Mark McCann's Soapbox Racing down. So yeah. stay tuned for that one. I've been dreaming on in my head like I've seen it a life worth living. So there's no introduction needed with this absolute monstrosity of a vehicle. This is my lovely, lovely zombie, which you would have seen it with Slater down at the British Motor Show, the one and only, absolutely ripping hell out in the um, live action arena. Live action arena, it? full, yeah. 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 You think he got a bit, a bit overly excited, as you would have seen on there, and she's a little bit poorly. Yeah, so uh, right at the end, unfortunately, the gearbox um, decided to start letting go. If you were there, you'll notice it lost reverse first, so we pushed it into the kind of death circle in the middle, and it was getting pushed out of the event each time because the gearbox was getting too hot. So it actually hasn't moved since British Motor Show. No, so it's got a couple of bits of work. She will be coming back, I promise you that. Um, we've just got other things going on at the moment, so I'm going to be pulling the box rebuilding it again for the second time, I mean, they did it originally. Um, change the uh, rear tyres because they're completely shredded now, which is the the one rule by Dave Slayer before he took it out to the British Motor Show. It had to come back with flat rears, which it has. So <laughs> that'll be coming back, so you will see her again, so don't worry. Yeah, so if you don't know about the zombie as well, this does actually have a 351 Cleveland in it, and it is running Holly EFI as well. And on the other episodes, you'll see where we actually put up another car, and that is why the whole body is so wide on this. So this is two cars welded together to make this. So yeah, it will be back. So this is a car that uh, only people who know me personally would have ever seen. This is my one of my dream cars, um, which you wouldn't have guessed in the state that it's been sat in now, because it's so dirty in here. Uh, but this is a C36 AMG Mercedes from 1996. Now, this was my first car, and she'll never get sold anywhere whatsoever. Um, like I say, she looks really dirty at the moment, but she is really, really nice underneath the dirt. Dust is protection. It is. It, which it's, is like literally, it's like having a sheet over the top. <laughs> it is. It did have a sheet in before, but I'm pretty sure 
some redneck guy that we know um, nicked it for his that he then sold. Yeah. Um, so so it free with the cover. Or with the cover, yeah. yeah. Which left mine out here like this, but um, she's actually going to be undergoing a full restoration, and then she'll probably be going into a into a bubble. So if you're lucky enough to see this, you're very very lucky because you probably won't see another one out on the road. But this is my my pride and joy. Yeah. So C36 as well. They are obviously an AMG car, so this is equipped with a 3.6 straight six in it, and these are a proper, proper beast. This is just before the transition where Mercedes actually bought AMG, so it is a very cool car. Yeah. So yeah, we can't wait to get it back out, but because we've been building other stuff, it's better off sat here with a layer of dust on it and set. I love pyro. <laughs> you just can't help but love pyro. I can't. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, um, Pyromaniac. This car is one of those cars that we all love. We just absolutely love it. It's just so iconic, isn't it? And yeah. like, it has been an amazing car for us on the channel as well. It just keeps bursting into flames. And it never ceases to put a smile on our faces, no. does it? I can't even look at it without smiling. It's just no. it's, it's pyro. It's perfectly bismal, isn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? This it's again, it's another car in the whole fleet that not only us as the guy as the, the channel itself, but you guys at home as well absolutely love this thing. Everyone's asking for it to come back and again it will be coming back out. We've got a couple of breaks to do on it. Yeah. Um, for shock they blew off again. Yeah. Um, and then there might, there is talks around the garage of having the uh, iron duke removed and the big engine swapping yeah. again. We've got, we have got a plan actually to change engines in this, but because we've got so many other projects on the go at the minute, we're focusing on those one at a time, get those out of the way, and we will be bringing this back with a new engine. We've got the perfect thing to go in it, and we're so glad that that fire suppression system is on this car as well from FEV. Yes, definitely. Still holding up, still doing what it's supposed to do. Absolutely wicked. So yeah, she'll be coming back as the pyromaniac, but more maniac than pyro, hopefully. Yeah. That is the end of the garage tour for today. And hopefully you've seen a couple of vehicles that you haven't seen before and also a couple of new favorites. And let us know in the comments below what cars you would like to see an episode on because obviously we have our favorites, but we want to know what you like as well. But that is it for this episode of the Anarchy Garage. See you next time.